morning. It's a new day, a new week. Shaking. 
I would like for us all, just for a second, let's just go to the Lord in repentance. If there's anything, hallelujah, God is the one that washes it all away. And he doesn't tell us anywhere in his word to beg him. When we repent, we are forgiven. And we are to believe that. Amen. One of the beautiful things in Scripture and the word of the Lord we, we do believe this. He forgives us of all of our sins. But it also says, and he heals us of all of our diseases. Does anybody believe in healing still? Oh, come on. We have faith that he'll forgive us. Do you really have that kind of faith that he'll forgive you? Same kind of faith. Let's go to the Lord right now. Come on, God. We just ask you, Lord, together this morning the beginning of this day it's a brand new day your mercies are new every morning today Lord forgive us forgive me Lord. forgive me for my sins if there's anything in my heart that's not right if there's anything that I've said or done if there's thoughts that I've thought things that I've seen things that I've heard that has created in me a wrong spirit I pray, God, that you would wash me right now. Forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. We want to be pure. We want to be whole. Wash us. Deliver us. I pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Come on, somebody. Thank him for his mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. 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 Praise God. Praise God. In the name of
of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now let's pray for those that are sick. They need healing in their body. There will be names that you'll see up here in front of you. Look at the names. Call those names. You may know people that need a miracle. They need a touch. They, they may need a job. Whatever the situation is, God's able to do it. And so let's go to the Lord right now and just, just speak healing in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are the God that forgives us of all of our sins and you heal us of all of our diseases. There is not a sickness. There's not a disease. There is no infirmity that is too big. And Lord God, today we speak together in unity. We speak, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We come against the sickness, the diseases, the infirmities, those things, those strongholds that want to plague our bodies. And in the name of Jesus, we command them to loose their hold and to leave, to flee. And we speak healing. We lose healing to flow in our bodies in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Unto those cells that fight infection. Multiply. 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 In fact, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That we may be free today. We give you praise for it, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. So good to have all of you here worshiping the Lord with us today. If you are a visitor, you're our guest, and we are so glad you are here. And we're thankful that you are here, and we welcome you here. Amen. Thank you for coming, worshiping the Lord with us today. Going to give you an opportunity to give unto the Lord. I, I just want to welcome the live stream. Uh, those that are watching live stream, thank you for joining us today, worshiping the Lord with us today. Amen. I'm going to give you an opportunity to give of the offering of the tithes. Let's just pray for the Lord to bless it right now. Lord, we pray your blessing upon the offerings and the tithes. We pray, God, that you would use it for your glory that you would build your church. We thank you for it. We thank you for every blessing. Thank you for continuing to bless all of us. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Come bring your offering ties. Everybody smile as big as you can. Wave at everybody around you. Wave in every direction. Receive this as our hugs, our handshakes, and all of those things. God bless you.
Jesus the Messiah, you're the hope of all the world. By your grace, I live and breathe to worship you. Hallelujah. You have overcome. You have overcome. Hallelujah. Jesus, you have Oh, my God. 
You need to pray like you're an overcomer right now. Come on, there's not a devil. There's not a principality nor power nor anything above the heavens nor anything under. Hallelujah, that can separate you from the love of the almighty God. Come on, every stronghold must be broken. In the name of Jesus, come on, every stronghold, every attack upon your mind. God to cause depression in your spirit must be broken hallelujah hallelujah for we are overcomers by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony hallelujah keep your praise going I'm alive hallelujah when your praise is coming out of your mouth you are letting everybody know I'm alive Nothing's going to hold me down. Nothing's going to lock me down. Nothing's going to tie me down. Nothing's going to bind me. Nothing's going to cause me to go into a shell. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Here we go, here we go. Every high thing must come down. Every strong 
Somebody in faith, would you lift your hands and say, I am healed? Oh, I don't know what it might be. Maybe it was depression. Uh, I am healed. I am healed. I am healed. Thank you, Lord. 
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. spoken to the fountains of the great deep and the windows from on high have been opened I the Lord thy God am pouring out upon you the blessing that you have desired your prayers that you have prayed promises that you have reached to I am opening the windows of heaven I am opening the floodgates. Believe, receive, and do not stop. Keep on believing. I am speaking unto you, my children. You feel my presence. You feel my hands upon you. I am the Lord thy God that heals you. And I am with you, and I go before you, and I am your rear guard. I am with my people. Thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. I just keep hearing it over and over in my spirit, what the Lord said, and that is, by his blood, we are overcomers. By the blood of the Lamb, the blood that was shed is more powerful than you could ever imagine. Your mind is not capable of comprehending everything that took place on that old rugged cross when that curse was broken when Satan lost the power that he had and he lost the keys to death and hell hallelujah Jesus did something so powerful if you could just receive and believe today that that curse has been broken by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Keep your testimony alive. No matter what you see, keep your testimony alive. Amen. No matter what you see, keep your testimony alive. This walk is not a walk of sight. It's a walk of faith. Hallelujah. Even though you still see the wall before you, you need to keep your faith alive. Hallelujah, because God can tear down the walls and move those things that seem so big. Hallelujah, let's worship the Lord. Amen, praise God. For this day, we're gathered in your name, calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire, burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing.
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. I feel the presence of the Lord in the house of worship. Hallelujah. There's no greater place to be on the day the Lord is made than in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord for another day. Amen. Just want to make a quick announcement. Amen. Those of you that know Brother Michael Anderson, he's going to be here tonight preaching, singing. Amen. You will be blessed by his ministry. Amen. 
And uh, looking forward to tonight being here again. Don't forget, church begins at 6 p.m. And those of you that will come early, come at 5.30 and let's pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You just never know what the Lord is going to do. This day is brand new. Hallelujah. Amen. And there's nothing you can compare him to. Nothing. Nothing in the past. You just need to be fresh. You need your, your spirit to be fresh and open in faith. This may just be the day God gives you a miracle. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Amen. I serve that God. Hallelujah. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. Hallelujah. He's my God. He's, he's the one that led Moses. He's the one part of the Red Sea. He's the one that healed leprosy. Hallelujah. And healed the blind eyes, raised the dead. That's my God. It's my God. Amen. If you'll turn me to Luke chapter 24, reading verse 49 through verse 53. Luke chapter 24, again, verse 49 through verse 53. And again, I want to say thank you to all of you that have come today and all of our visitors that have come. Thank you so much for being with us, and coming and worshiping with us. Luke chapter 24, again, verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with the power from on high. That word tarry means go and, and, and then, then wait. Hallelujah. Because there's, there's more. Amen. Verse 50. He led them out as far as to Bethany. He lifted up his hands and he blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him. And they returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. I want to title this, just two words, don't stop. Don't. If you see that sign when you're driving, stop. <laughs> but since we're talking about the spiritual, don't stop. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you today for this fresh day. Our faith is fresh. Your mercy is new. And your word is truth. Speak to us again in Jesus' name. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. A man named Derek Redman. Some of you may be familiar with his name. Some of you may not be. If you want to, you can go to Google and just Google Derek Redman. But he arrived in the 1992 Olympic Summer Games in Barcelona. And he was determined he was going to win a medal, the 400-meter race. He was going to win it in this Olympic game. And as a crowd of 65,000 people we're watching. I actually wanted to get, there's one clip on there. There's many clips of this, but there's one. If you do go there, find that one. It's three minutes and 58 seconds long. You'll, you'll see three minutes, 58 seconds. That's that specific one. It just kind of takes and goes right to the point to, with, with what, what happened here. But Derek, he was doing very, very, very well. He was running with everybody else, and then he opens up and and he, he, would have, he would have won if something didn't happen. But when he got to the place where he was 250 meters 
from finishing. His right hamstring just tore. Pow! And it was an immediate thing. It wasn't something, you know, where he's running, he's slowing down. I mean, it, it's just, it, it, you can imagine if it just pops. And, and he falls. And he realized at that point, that was it. He falls to the ground. He's in extreme pain. With pain etched upon his face and with his body in agony, he gets back up. Of course, he's a long way behind now. Y'all know that. And he, 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 in pain, he starts hobbling. And his daddy comes running out from the crowd. Security guards trying to cut him off and stop him. And he fights his way through and he gets up beside his son. And he starts telling his son, son, you don't have to do this. You know, he, he had the drive. He wanted to so bad. He wanted to do it for his dad and everybody else. And his dad saying, son, you don't have to do this. And he just keeps on hobbling. And he keeps hobbling and he keeps hobbling and he keeps hobbling until he makes it across the finish line. Instead of quitting, when everything was against him, and just stay in there until the people come and paramedics carry you, instead of just stopping against all of the odds, he had a driving him. And there is a caption that comes across when you're, you're watching this video. And it says, Derek didn't win an Olympic medal. But he finished his race. He didn't win the Olympic medal. But he finished. He made it all the way. The most important words spoken by Jesus before he ascended unto heaven. His last words is, you've got to receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Go to the book of Acts. It's connecting into it. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Jesus said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up in a cloud, received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, two men stood by them in white apparel. And they said, you men of Galilee... Why stand gazing unto heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you unto heaven, shall come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Can I preach to somebody this morning? He is coming back the same way they seen him leave. I'm going to tell you right now, he is. Hallelujah, there's going to be a parting of that sky. Hallelujah. What I'm looking for right now is called the rapture. Amen. That's where he, Jesus doesn't touch the earth. Hallelujah. He just calls us to meet him in the air. Hallelujah. And the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And then we which are alive and remain, we will rise and meet them in the air. Hallelujah. Can I tell you what's going to cause you to come up out of the grave and what's going to cause those of you that may be still here when it happens to rise and meet him in the air? It's the power inside of you that is God. It is the resurrection power. It is the spirit of the living God. How, what makes you dance? What lights you up? That fire in your spirit when you hear the word of God preached uh, and you feel the breath of God breathe upon you uh, and you begin to move and dance to that. That spirit uh, inside of you uh, one day is going to get you out of here. And it's going to happen in a twinkling of an eye. It's going to be so quick. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. 
after Jesus rose from the grave, after his death, his burial, and his resurrection, Jesus ministered for 40 days. 40 days. And in that time period, he covered the most important things. If it, you, just think, well, if you was down to your last little bit, you're going to bring out the most important things that needs to be said, that needs to be passed on. Before he ascended into heaven, he began focusing. Receive the Holy Ghost. You got to receive the Holy Ghost. You got to be there in Jerusalem. You got to be ready. Amen. You got to be endued with power. You've got to receive power that comes from on high. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 2, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them for 40 days, speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise. Wait for the promise which saith he, you have heard of me. Hallelujah. In other words, wait for me. Wait for my spirit. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Amen, Jesus. Amen. There was one. Hallelujah. That was the visible. That was the visible representative of the invisible God. That is scripture which I'm quoting to you right now. Hallelujah. But thank God a day came. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, where his spirit comes unto us, and you are the body of Christ. I said, and you are the body of Christ, and you are the body of Christ. How the greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. And we have a day coming where we are going to rise. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. It was recorded in the gospel of Luke. Jesus said in Luke 24 and 49, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Go and tarry. Wait in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as to Bethany. He lifted up his hands. He blessed them and it came to pass. While he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshiped and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising God. Hallelujah. They were continually there. 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 Hallelujah. The apostle Paul, he tells us exactly how many Jesus preached to. Now, y'all got to remember, this is the fire starting place. Okay? When you get in the book of Acts, you've got the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All right? That's going to give account of the life, death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then you move into the book of Acts. That's where he ascended up into heaven, and then everything else began to take place. All right? So you, you need to know where everything is in the picture. The Apostle Paul, he tells us exactly how many people Jesus had preached to in the 40-day span of time between the resurrection and his ascension into heaven. 1 Corinthians 15 and 4. In case anybody's ever heard this, read this, you now can say you, you know. He was buried. He rose again on the third day according to Scripture. And he was seen of Cephas. Of the 12 disciples. After that, he was seen of more than above 500 at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some of them have fallen asleep. What he's meaning is some of them have already died from the time he was talking here. But Cephas, the 12 disciples, and over 500 people heard Jesus give 
his clear message. Go and wait in Jerusalem until you receive the promise of the Holy Ghost. In other words, you've got to go all the way and do not stop short. You've got to receive the Holy Ghost. Don't stop. Make it all the way to Pentecost. Hallelujah. I don't have time to preach all that. Pentecost, the word Pentecost just means 50 in case you got it. You know what is Pentecost? It just means 50. That's all it means. It was the 50th day. It's what happened on the 50th day after the blood was shed. And you go back in the Old Testament and find that out for yourself. When the blood was shed of the Passover lamb, 50 days later is when they received their salvation message, the commandments. So if you're going to have a New Testament, you're going to have to have a bloodshed and out 50 days. On the 50th day, that's what Pentecost means, the 50th day. And then you're going to have another testament, which is the salvation of the, the New Testament people. Acts chapter 2, verse 1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Hallelujah. On the 50th day. That 50th day was it's fully come now. They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. Set upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit would give them the utterance. Uh, that initial evidence of the infilling. Uh, which you're going to begin speaking in another language. You're going to begin speaking in tongues. Uh, your tongue which is the most unruly member of your body it's going to be under the control and power of the spirit of God that is inside of you and they begin receiving the ultimate fulfillment hallelujah 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 some people may be saying well why what are you preaching this for I'm preaching this because there's a lot of people you still need to go a little further you need to go a little further. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. Yes, you may be a Christian. And yes, you may be religious. And yes, you may go to church. But I'm telling you, if you have stopped short of receiving the Holy Ghost, like the Bible said, you got to have it to get out of here. you got to be filled with the Spirit of God if you're going to get off of this earth. When God calls his people out of here, you got to be filled with the resurrection power of the almighty living God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Please hear me. Hear me preach the most important message uh, that Jesus said now. I've got to focus on what is most important. Uh, when it all gets narrowed down, uh, I've got a few more moments of, to live uh, before I'm out of here. Uh, I've got some final words uh, to leave you with. The most important words is you've got to make it all the way to that upper room experience. You've got to be there. You've got to be in place. And you've got to be worshiping. And don't stop until you receive the Holy Ghost. Do not stop short. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, our old fleshly bodies, you know, in this religious stuff, we, we, none of us have it figured out. Amen. I'm telling you right now, and the power of God will touch us, and we will. Woo, hallelujah. Some people think that was it. I just got the Holy Ghost. Come on. Hallelujah. Some people, man, you know what? I've been living for God. I've been in church for the last 20 years of my life. You know, God filled me with the Holy Ghost somewhere down the road. Don't stop short. You need to know you have received the Holy Ghost, just like the Bible said. Hallelujah. Not, not somebody patting you on the back and just telling you everything's okay. You hear me. You want to be filled with the power of the Almighty God. You want to have resurrection in you when the Lord said, Now I'm sending out the cry for everybody that's got me inside of them. All right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. And you arise under the power of the Spirit of God inside of you. I'm preaching to you. I'm preaching to anybody that'll listen. Don't stop. Don't settle for less. Do not get distracted. Do not get sidetracked. Do not get bogged down in religion. And do not get deep. Hallelujah. The Lord is coming soon. I said, the Lord is coming soon. The Lord is coming soon. He's coming for his people. He's coming for his church. 
He's coming soon. You've got to have power inside of you. You've got to have resurrection inside of you. You've got to have a joy, a shout, a victory where God is inside of you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. I love Sister Irma back there. <laughs> Amen. Sister Irma, I was talking to her the other day. She's kind of new around here. She said, when I come here, I'm not going to church. I'm going to a Holy Ghost meeting. That's her words. That's the best word you could ever hear. Somebody saying, I'm not going to church. I'm going to a Holy Ghost meeting. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We got to get out of church. And we got to get into the kingdom of the almighty God where there's life. If we are just here to go to church, we're going to go home the same way we came. We're going to go home as a good old religious person. But we'll go home without the fulfillment. My God, come on, I feel in the Holy Ghost what I'm preaching. Hallelujah, I'm not here to give anybody religion. We don't need any more religion. They didn't need any more religion in the Old Testament when God came in the flesh. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, I'm preaching to somebody right now. Going to church is just another destination of the many destinations and many places you will go and you walk upon this earth. And going to church is short of the final destination. You need to receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. And don't stop. Whatever you do, don't stop. Hallelujah. Now, I know I'm going to mess with somebody's theology. But being a believer is not enough. That's not the final destination. Amen. Being a believer isn't the ultimate fulfillment of what came to fill you. Jesus made something very, 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 very clear before he was crucified. John 12 and 42. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers... Everybody say the religious people. I'm going to give you a quick test. Who crucified Jesus? The religious people. Among the chief rulers, many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they didn't confess him, lest they'd be kicked out. I can't know that stuff going on around here. Who was that? Shirley Caesar come up with that song, Hold My Mule? <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> hey, man, they come visit that person out there, I guess it was, it was a farm ranch or something like that, and they come out there to talk to him, say, look, dude, you, you can't do all that stuff you're doing in church. Right. He said, well, come hold my mule then. I'm going to do it right here. Right. <laughs> I love that. Come on, suck that out to be you. You're not going to shut me down. You're not going to stop me. Hold my mule. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to dance. I'm going to shout. I'm going to experience everything God said we can have. Uh, in the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm in the resurrection. You're not going to stop me. You're not going to bury me. You're not going to cover me up, cover me up with dirt. I'm coming out of it. 
Hallelujah. But they, they, they believed on him, but they, they, they just couldn't quite, you know, get into the, you know, I'm really, I want y'all to see what I got here. I was afraid they'd get booted out of the synagogues. Verse 43, and here's the problem. Brother Edwards, I don't care what anybody thinks. Aren't you worried about what people, I don't care what people think. And you go ask them people out there if they care what you think when they paint themselves up all goofy and act all crazy. They don't care what you think. They get out there and dance all their goofy dances and paint themselves purple and put holes in their head and everywhere else in their body and tattoo them from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. And they don't care what you say. So why should we walk on eggshells? When we're talking about what's going to save a man, what's going to save a woman, what's going to get you out of here and save you from hell and destruction. Hallelujah. But they, they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. Don't stop. Well, I'm one of those silent believers. Come on now. I don't want to be noticed. Come on now. I don't care what that person says and what that one thinks or what anybody else. I'm going to be filled with the power of God like the Bible said. And you better get out of the way because I'm probably going to spit all over everything as the Holy Ghost shakes me from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. Come on, we've got to have the resurrection power. Satan don't care if you get everything else, but you get a little less than the all the fullness. Just a little bit less. I'm going to tell you what a lie is. A lie is not what I say. A lie is what I keep out from the truth that keeps you from getting it all. I just stop short of the whole and deceive you. Oh, come on. Y'all got to help me today. Hallelujah. Amen. But y'all know I've been going against all the deceptions and I don't care what people think. I know our time is short. I've been feeling it in the Holy Ghost. Our time is short. You better get ready. The Lord is about to get his church out of here and the Antichrist is going to get to rule for a short while. And the wrath of God is going to come. And that's a whole other message I had planned for tonight. But I'm not going to preach it because Brother Anderson come, yeah. sent me a text, told me, and I said, well, come on, brother, go ahead. Oh. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. So I better stay away from that. I want you to get it, uh, the, the whole message so without me giving you a little bit of the. But you've not been called to wrath. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. John chapter 7, verse 37. In the last days, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and he cried out. He said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Amen. That's it. What is he doing? What's causing this explosion of the way he's doing things? And listen to him. Keep listening to him. The place is filled with believers. It's filled with believers. But believing who wasn't enough for them. You gotta understand that. And he makes it very clear what I'm about to say. He was letting them know what he's talking about was not talking about right then because he hadn't been glorified yet. Oh, here we go. In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried. I said, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture saith, then out of his belly, it's going to come flowing rivers of living water. But he didn't put a period there. Verse 39. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. 
the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Oh, come on. You can't go, go back over there into the Gospels and say, oh, you know, I received the Holy Ghost right here. No, friend, you, go, you got to go to the book of Acts. That's where they received the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's where they received the Holy Ghost. The last person saved under that Old Testament was that thief on the cross beside Jesus. He didn't have to be baptized. He didn't have to because Jesus was still alive. And a man's words are good while he's living. A testament, this is scripture, is not in force until after the death of the testator. That thief beside him, Lord, will you remember me today? He said, today you will be with me. Those words were good. Hallelujah. But after that, friend, when he breathed his last breath, you better go to the 12 and make sure you're, what you're preaching is what they're preaching because that's the New Testament, the new will of God. That's why the 12 was on the day of Pentecost standing and preaching together. Peter was leading that crusade as they were preaching about salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, I'm preaching. Are you a believer? Are you a believer? Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost like they received in the book of Acts. Are you a believer? Hallelujah. You got to receive the Holy Ghost. This spake he of the Spirit, which would not happen until after he is glorified, sends back unto heaven. Is there anybody thirsty? Anybody thirsty? If anybody thirst, he said, let them come unto me. Come and drink. Come to the well. Come to the water. Out of your blood, it's going to flow through you. I said, Jesus is going to flow through you. Mm. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey Amen. Come on, if you're a believer, as the scripture is talking about, receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. If you are a true believer, whatever you do, don't stop. Don't stop. Hey Amen. Believing will not save you. James 2 and 19, thou believest there is one God, you do well. The devils believe. We get to all stand together with the devils. Yep. I believe. That's as far as they can go. That's it. That's their final destination. By the way, do you believe there's only one? Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord. And there is no other. And he will share his glory with no other. And there is no other Savior beside him. Oh, oh hallelujah. Come on. Mm. That's why when they were walking with Jesus, he told them, before Abraham was, I am. This has got to be blasphemy. Before Abraham was, I am. Jesus, would you show us the Father? 
Have I been so long with you? And you not know me. He is the visible image of the invisible God. He's the word made flesh and walked among us. And when you're baptized, there's not three. There's one. And he has a name. And his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. There is no other name under heaven whereby a man may be saved. I said there's one. And you got to have that and you got to know that. Because his word says if you don't believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. That's what Jesus said. The devils believe there's only one. And his name is all powerful and almighty. If you have not been baptized in the name of Jesus, don't leave here today without going down in this water confessing the name. Jesus! Hallelujah. He is the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. He's everything in one. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know why I've been feeling in the last days I have got to do everything I can. Get truth, the whole truth. Hallelujah. If you hadn't been baptized in Jesus' name, do not leave today without being baptized in Jesus' name. Do not wait. Don't say, well, I want to wait until I can gather a family reunion down the road. You need to be ready when the Lord comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You must be born of the water and of the Spirit to enter into the kingdom of God. You must be. You must be baptized in Jesus' name. You must receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Look to your neighbor and say, be more than a believer. Go all the way. Hallelujah. Get thirsty. Got to have Jesus. Fill me with Jesus. Got to fill with the Spirit of God. Mark chapter 16, verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs will follow them that believe. In my name they'll cast out devils. And they'll speak with new tongues. Hallelujah. Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? Have you been baptized in the water and in his spirit? You got to be baptized. Hallelujah. Come on, John the Baptist. He was going before him. Y'all know that. And he was preaching Matthew 3 and 11. I baptize you with water under repentance. But there's one that's coming after me who's mightier than I am, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And with fire. Something's going to get all inside of you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I feel something dancing all over me inside my spirit. Amen. 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 Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul was not one of the 12. Okay? Apostle Paul was not one of the 12. Apostle Paul was not one of those of the 500 and then the 12 and then Cephas. You know, Apostle Paul wasn't. All right? Apostle Paul was a guy that said, take out the Christians. He was a persecutor of the Jesus followers. Okay, he wasn't one of the 12. He wasn't one of them where Jesus was preaching, you know, going to wait and tear in Jerusalem. But when you read the book of Acts, you're going to be about, reading about a man that was converted, was transformed, was changed by the power of God and received a message directly from the Lord. He had not conferred with the 12. He didn't know what they were teaching. 
He didn't know what they were preaching. This is the apostle Paul. Acts 19 and 2. Apostle Paul. All right. Now, if you read this, the scripture ahead of this is telling you he come across followers of John the Baptist. All right? He came across them. Now, listen to what the Apostle Paul is saying. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you have believed? They said, we have not heard anything about Holy Ghost. He said, well, okay, let's back up. Unto what were you baptized? And they said, unto John's baptism. And said, Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, and that is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were re-baptized. Could you imagine today if I come across some followers of John the Baptist? (laughs) You mean you you tell me I need to be re-baptized? Y'all imagine, y'all, y'all know how hard-headed folks are. Just think if they were, but John the Baptist baptized me. What Paul says don't matter. Thing is, there's still more. You got to be baptized in Jesus' name. All right, verse 5, and when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them. They began speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. The two most important questions you can ask anybody is, have you been baptized in Jesus' name? And have you received the Holy Ghost? You've got to be born again to enter into the kingdom of God. You must be born again to enter into the kingdom of God. Now I mentioned, I'm coming to an end. I mentioned how many people of the original, where Jesus met with them from the time he rose from the grave and he ascended up unto heaven. I'm going to read the scripture and it tells us In Acts chapter 1, verse 15, in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of his disciples. He said the number of names together were about 120. About. Out of the original number, 12 disciples, Cephas, and over 500, for some reason, I don't know why, but for some reason, Only 120 were there. Don't know what happened, what kind of distractions, what all went on. All I know is for some reason, there were only 120 there when God poured out his spirit for the very first time in the book of Acts. They were one step away from the Holy of Holies. They were one step away from the glory of God. They were one step away from receiving the promise of God. They were only one step away from being endued with power from on high. They were so close, but yet over 380 of them never made it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, you'll continue up from the original, though, after that, after Peter preached, repent, be baptized, and she didn't receive the Holy Ghost. Then 3,000 were baptized, and then after that, 5,000, and of course, it kept on. And praise God, I'm one of them today that's here, filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, got the fire burning in my spirit, and waiting for the return. Yes. Amen. 
Hallelujah. How, what about you? Are you going to be numbered of the number that said, I went all the way? I went all the way. I didn't stop short. I didn't sell out. I didn't get the get caught up in deceptions and all the other stuff. I want to be more than a believer. I want to be ready. Yeah. Hallelujah. When that trumpet sounds, I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be filled with the spirit of the living God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Will you stand with me? I'm preaching about the most important message. You've got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You've got to be ready. Be ready. Don't doubt. Don't question. Be ready. Be ready. Hallelujah. Be ready. When the Lord comes for his church. There is going to be a second coming. That's where Jesus Christ comes and his feet touches this earth again. I want to go in the rapture. You don't want to be here in that time between the rapture and his second coming. Be out of here. I want to come back with him in white linen, riding a white horse, right on King Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's going to show up on this world, and he's going to show them who's boss at that time. There's no more playing games, buddy. There's no more playing games. I'm going to tell you right now. Friend, his glory is going to wipe out the kings and their armies and everything else and the demons and everything. I'm telling you right now. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you getting ready for the coming of the Lord, preacher? No, I'm ready for a rapture. I'm not get out of here. This thing's fixing to go into another dispensation. And I'm telling you, I, I want to be there when that dispensation and begins hallelujah hallelujah we've got the message for our dispensation and that is repent and be baptized in Jesus name and receive the Holy Ghost amen Matthew 24 and 40 just in case you don't know what's coming there's going to be two people in the field one's going to be gone and the other one's still sitting there. What in the world just happened? How about it, Brother Tom? You believe this, man? Oh, man. Hallelujah. Bring it on home, preacher. Okay. There are going to be two people in church. And there's going to be two people on the platform singing. And one's going to be taken and the other left. There's going to be a day where they're going to say, please, let's have a prayer meeting. Church, can we, can, let's just have a prayer meeting. Friend, I don't want to be at that prayer meeting. When they really want to pray. Verse 41. And there's going to be two women. Be grinding in the mill. Be grinding on the keyboard. Be grinding and scrubbing in the house. One and the other. Oh. I got to have a counseling session with a pastor. I ain't going to be here. No. Uh-uh. No. I'm going to tell you right now. I ain't going to be here. I ain't going to be here. I am dead set I'm not going to be here. I am not going to let anybody mess my head up and stop short. Oh, friend, I don't come looking to have a counseling session with me. I'm going to be one of those you're going to find my suit laying on the ground. If 
Verse 42. Watch therefore, for you know not what the hour your Lord doth come. But know this. If the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would be watching. And he doesn't suffer his house being broken into. Therefore, be ready. Such an hour you think not. There's not going to be any prayer meeting. It's not going to be if y'all gather around me. Hallelujah. There's going to be a lot of wailing going on. My, 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 my. Come on. Hallelujah. Can I preach about the urgency of the hour? The urgency, the urgency, the urgency, the urgency. Can't you tell I'm preaching under something right now? Uh, it's the urgency. I feel an urgency, an urgent cry stirring in my spirit. I don't know how to preach any better, do anything. I, I told you this. I don't know how to do it. All I know how to do is throw the seed. All I can do is throw the corn. All I know to do is God called me to preach Hallelujah. But somehow, some way, there's got to be an urgency that gets upon the people. An urgency that says, I've got to get to that place. I'm not going to stop short. I know some of you have been beat up. Some of you, you've been abused. Some of you have been through all kind of mind warp zones in life. But you need to get your old limping self up. And you need to start getting yourself to that place that's called the fulfillment. i got to get there. i got to get there. I don't care how some pastor treated me and I don't care how some brother or sister treated me and you gotta get to the place where you're ready you gotta be ready you gotta be ready you gotta be filled with the Holy Ghost be filled with the Holy Ghost be filled with the Holy Ghost oh hallelujah is there any limping folks in the house? Come on up around the front with me. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have my say whatever it takes, God. I gotta be ready. I've got to be filled with the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Come on. Some of you have a story about somewhere where you fell. Got a hamstring popped. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Enter in. Know that you're watching. Know that you're ready. Hallelujah. 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 Send your fire from the upper room. Send your fire, Lord, we ask of you. Send your fire from the upper room. Send your fire, Lord, we ask of you. Send your fire from the upper room. Send your fire, Lord, we ask of you. Send your fire from the upper room. Till we pray through, pour out your spirit, let us be changed. Send the fire, Lord, again. Send your fire from the upper room. Send your fire, Lord, we ask of you. Send your fire from the upper room. Send your fire, Lord, we ask of you. From vessel to vessel, we can. Send the light of rain again. Send 
Hi, this is Pastor Kevin Martin, and I just want to thank y'all for joining us today, tuning in and being a part of our service. We hope that it was a blessing to you and that you were uplifted and encouraged and felt the presence of the Lord. If you would like to know more about our church, please join us at www.atascacitaupc.com and you will find all of the ministries. You will find pictures where you could take a journey and see everything that's been going on at the Pentecostal Church of Atascacita. And uh, we hope that you join us again very soon. God bless you.